Hello everybody, I'm here again doing another thing about um, MBTI. This time I'm talking about, uh, this is my second video to do with functions. Um, my last video about functions was comparing extroverted feeling with extroverted thinking, which are both extroverted judging functions. So this new video I'm going to be talking about uh, my second function is in the ENFJ, which is introverted intuition, and I am going to be comparing that with its twin function, which is also an introverted perceiving function, introverted sensing. So basically, um, in this, I'll, uh, obviously people are going to find it quite difficult to find the probably the, the common thread between introverted intuition and introverted sensing because. Um, they prioritise very different things as perceptions. Um, but there must be a, some kind of commonality between them because obviously they're both introverted um, perceiving functions. So what I'm going to do is, like in my extroverted judging function video, so my video about extroverted feeling and extroverted thinking, um, I'll be showing you the difference between the roots of the of the function and then the difference between the branches of the different functions. So with extroverted feeling and extroverted thinking I said how they both wanted to uh, make systems work well but one of them which is extroverted thinking tends to deal with systems to do with uh, things and one of them deals with systems to do with people. So one of them tries to figure out the moral playing field and one of them tries to figure out the way that things work and then they both try to make a better world out of those things. So so now really I need to talk about um, uh, the, the commonality between introverted intuition and introverted sensing in order that I can show you what the differences between them are. So, Basically, they're both, obviously, as I've already said, introverted perceiving functions. So um, the similarity between them um, is that they're actually both really strongly connected with memory and experience. So um, I think that if you were an introverted sensing user, uh, you would tend to rely on your experience. I think that's probably something you would probably hear from a lot of introverted sensing users. You know, they would say, well, you know, I always rely on my experience to tell me what I ought to do next. Um, and actually, the interesting thing is, is that um, with introverted intuition, you're also relying on your experience, but in a different kind of way. So, and the interesting thing, of course, is that a lot of the time, introverted sensing is kind of assigned the, the function of memory. Um, people tend to talk about SI being a memory function and that that's what it does. But, of course, what really got me thinking about it was that I was sitting there thinking, well, I've got a good memory, and I don't really know why. If introverted sensing is my memory function, and it's, what, in my sixth... It's my sixth uh, function, then I should have a terrible memory. But I tend to have a really good memory, so I'm sitting there thinking, well, why have I then? Um, and I kind of realised that what it really is, is that I'm good at remembering things uh, because I use introverted intuition to do it. And of course we use our introverted functions more to remember things than our extroverted functions. Um, so I suddenly thought, well of course it's my introverted intuition which is doing this for me. So then I thought, well, what's really the difference between introverted sensing and introverted intuition? Um, and really, I, I kind of realised that in a very basic fashion, um, with my introverted intuition, I, w I was really good at remembering patterns and general things, right? But also that I remember the links between things. So I need to form an abstract link between two different things in order that I remember it well. So, um, for example, I find it really difficult to remember people's names in English because I find them really generic. So everyone seems to be called the same thing, you know, be it like James or Peter or something. Basically, a lot of these people have got same, the same kind of names. And, of course, I remember a name after a while. But I found the best way for me to remember a name is to talk to the person and then write down their name. Um, 
And I think that's because I've kind of created a, an abstract pattern or an abstract link between me and the person by doing something more than just trying to remember it. I've written it down, and then I've got an abstract link between the one thing and the other. And then, therefore, it's a pattern, and I can remember it much easier. Whereas I think with introverted sensing, it would be a lot easier for them to do things like remember names. Uh, it would seem pretty simple to me. They'd probably think it was really easy to do so. Whereas I find it much more difficult, where I just have to create this abstract link. So I kind of think they're both memory functions, and they're both trying to rely on experience, which is why I think they're so subconscious. Um, because I think you probably hear a lot to do with the description of introverted intuition is that people will sit there, if they're an introverted intuition user, they'll sit there for a long time trying to figure out something and then suddenly they'll have an answer. And I think that's why it's really strange for people be observing NI users because basically what happens is is that you tend to sort of, you don't know where you're getting it from but it must be somewhere in your memory. Uh, which is why it suddenly pops out and you're making abstract links so it suddenly pops out into your consciousness which is quite un quite weird, quite unusual. So what I'm going to do now is kind of try and read through these two descriptions of introverted intuition and then introverted sensing and see whether or not you can see the commonalities and then the differences between the two because um, it will kind of give you an idea. So introverted intuition is a memory function um, it observes and processes information internally and creates very clear patterns of the world it changes behavior of objects sorry it watches behavior of objects and people and extrapolates from there generating more patterns gradually fitting in with the rhythms of everything around it introverted intuition wants to work towards the future and it takes these patterns creating a model of what was wrong before and therefore what ought to be changed for the future. Right, so it's kind of doing the same thing as introverted sensing in that what it does is though, I'll just explain the differences between those two bits. So introverted sensing is a memory function. It observes and, observes and processes information internally and creates very clear personal observations observations of those things close to it. It watches behaviour of objects and people and likes to rely on the detailed information at hand, stroke in front of its nose, in an objective fashion. Internally it creates memories of those things it's comfortable with or thinks are bad based on this singular view. So you can see kind of like one of them is much more singular and one of them is much more wide field, okay? But they have that similarity that they're both remembering something within a pattern, if you see what I mean, like a, a memory. So then I've got more of NI's. NI loves ideas to work with because it wishes to process these ideas in the real world so that it can improve on these previous patterns and generate a better pattern in the world to come. Be that an, an be that an object for a more T-heavy user or a more personal thing for a more F-heavy user. Right, so here I've got SI likes to keep what is relevant and what it's happy with. It upholds these ingrained patterns and things which aren't within this experience are considered weird. So SI loves physical, uh, physical things to work with because it wishes to produ reproduce those physical experiences in the real world so that it can sensationally feel comfortable and good, be that with an object for a more T-heavy user or a more personal thing for an F-heavy user. So one of them is more tactile, one of them is more uh, ideas-based. So those are the differences there. Then we have uh, introverted intuition chews up information on the inside and always has been quietly in the background. And really that's the key to it. You know, introverted sensing chews up information on the inside and always has been quietly in the background. Those are very, that's very important, you know. Those two functions work that way uh, and that's why they're so related. Um, I'll carry on. This is why introverted intuition is hard to detect. It's been there doing its thing all its life subconsciously for the user. Because of this fact, 
creative and incredibly accurate observations become second nature as the pattern function will not say what it has until it's ready to. Therefore, it won't feel as if there was, there was anything getting ready or anything to get ready. Introverted intuition reads between lines because it is second nature to see more than what is really there, be it that body, be, be it that body language expression or something even less palpable than that. So it's like reading all these different things without really knowing why and having a very second nature towards it, like a sixth sense really. Um, introverted intuition just knows without necessarily knowing why it knows. Patterns become so clearly ingrained that even dreams and experiences are generated in which coincidences happen more frequently, like prophetic dreams and foreknowledge. This pattern is so clear and the rhythm so subconsciously observable that the patterns arise from the subconscious to affect the user. Introverted intuition can cause a problem by being so stuck in imaginative fields that it can't engage reality and senses, so needs a twin with a sensing function to ground it. So you can see what I'm trying to say there is that the pattern gets so obvious for the intuition user, the introverted intuition user, internally, but it can't really speak about it. So these patterns are ingrained and suddenly become very clear, and that's why you 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 can't detect the pattern on the inside, but it's there. It's working away as a memory inside your head, as a, an experience thing. Um, so that's that's really the difference. I mean, I've obviously carried on the introverted sensing as well. So I've also said this is why SI, introverted sensing, is hard to detect. It's been there doing its thing all its life subconsciously for the user. Because of this fact, memories of very, of very specific events and minute observations become second nature as the memory function will not say what it has to until it's ready to, though it won't feel as if there was anything getting ready or anything to get ready. Introverted sensing deals with what's there and what's repeatable because it worked before and therefore repeating the useful thing again is second nature to do the right stroke same thing again. It objectively worked the first time, why break what's already fixed? This physical pattern is so clear and the rhythm of memory so subconsciously observable that the repeatable physical experiences arise from the subconscious to affect the user. Introverted sensing can cause a problem by being too stuck in sensory fields that it can't engage imagination, so needs a twin with an intuitive function to allow it to flourish to ideas. Right, so obviously that's why both an ESFJ and an ENFJ will have, you know, they have an introverted intuition and then an extroverted sensing and the same thing but the other way around for the ESFJ that they have um, introverted sensing followed by extroverted intuition. But that's really the main difference. Um, and as you can see in my, extro my introverted sensing uh, explanation, I've kind of explained how it's, very subconscious, all these memories and repeatable things are very subconscious. You can't really detect them because it's almost like muscle memory, right? It's like you do the same thing again and it, it works again. So you just keep doing it. But it doesn't feel like you're doing anything to get that to work. It just works, right? So really, um, I think the difference between ESFJs and ENFJs should be apparent within that description. Um, the interesting thing, of course, is, is looking at the twin between the, int the intuition and the sensing uh, functions because both um, extroverted sensing and extroverted intuition are present uh, in the moment functions because they're both extroverted perceiving functions, which is obviously going to be my next video. But one of them is more vocal, which is extroverted intuition. Um, because it wants to include more ideas into the current sensing state. So that means that ESFJs tend to be louder than ENFJs because really um, ESFJs are speaking in extroverted feeling and extroverted intuition a little bit because they're both their extroverted functions. Whereas ENFJs tend to only talk in extroverted feeling because extroverted sensing really talks much more to do with just very basic events and it doesn't tend to add ideas to it which is what the 
interesting thing about extroverted intuition is. So you'll find that people, ESFJs, are more small field and they so they'll talk about things which affect them and the people that are generally around them whereas ENFJs will talk about humanity because it's everything is included and then they'll talk about ENFJs will talk about how they feel about humanity and ESFJs will talk about how they feel with just the single few things but I'm afraid my time is up. It's now gone past 15 minutes, so hopefully it'll, stick, it'll let me record it. But I hope that was a useful explanation, and I'll see you soon. Leave a comment below if you wish to. Bye!